Hi everyone, my name is Katie and welcome to my page Red's Stitchery and let's talk about cross stitching. Um, this week I'm gonna give you updates on my current whips. We have two finishes. One is from May of Starts and the second one I think that whip I have for three years. It's one of the most difficult but most fun and most like exciting finishes in a while. Uh, it's a big finish in my opinion and I'm very very excited to show you all of those. Um, I also did some progress on my plants. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, a um, couple videos before this one I made a video for the plants for the rest of 2024 and I achieved some of those goals and the, one of the finishes that I'm going to share with you today it's part of that goal list too so that's why it makes me so excited to show you I literally finished it like last couple stitches I did right before filming this video so I'm very very excited to share with you uh, my finishes and all my progress and usually I'm sharing with you what I'm gonna show you next week and be honest with you as for right now I have no idea what I'm gonna finish uh, what I'm going to show you next week as for right now I have no idea what to film so I hope this week I'll be able to do lots of great progresses so and maybe start a couple new projects with us, which I'm planning on so nothing uh, planned for next week yet it's a surprise for myself too <laughs> but this week we have lots of progress two finishes and um, maybe the video not gonna be that long as usual but I think compared to the previous one that was what hour and 30 minutes I think it's gonna be just great <laughs> And my updates, I would like to start with the great one. I found a project that I thought I lost uh, and I remember now, as you can see, I washed it because I used to use pencil and you can still see it, but I wanted to kind of like fade it out. And when I finish, finish it, I will um, deep clean it, <laughs> I guess. But this is how it's gonna look at the end. That's what I stitched um, so far. And as you can see, I've done a lot. If I would stitch her again, I would definitely, definitely not pick Ida. Um, the eyes is not done yet. But the good news, the most busiest backstitch part, which is her scarf is done. Literally, all I have left is um, gloves and one sleeve. But um, I mark on a saga of how much I did so far, and it's rough somewhere around 70%. So in September, I'm gonna take her in a rotation. And if you watch my plan video, you know that I <laughs> decided to make my life a little bit complicated. I decided that this part so because her sleeve is cut over here so i'm not gonna do any work over here but up instead of the keeping a white background and it's 14th gallon aida i'm going to fill it out with half stitch brown thread i think i'm going to use the dark one that's used right here to make it like a chocolate background to bring that brightness um like her hair and yeah i'm very very happy that i was able to find it because lots of loss and time i used for this project and now when i figured it out how i want to finish finish it meaning add it in the background um, i'm actually interested in stitching her because before that um like last year, I think I grabbed her maybe one time and I thought honestly to throw it away because I really didn't like how my background going to look like. But now when I have idea with um, half stitch background, I'm again <laughs> interested in this process. And when I bought this pattern, I didn't pay attention that lots of beads are used in here already. Like the um, designer thought about it and already suggested where to put it all and stuff. And this element, like the writing in the book, I would like to change to maybe a gold floss or maybe make it a blend or maybe the etoile, I think I called the 
TMC floss with the sparkles in it, but it's like a floss. Anyway, now when I know how I want to upgrade this project, um, I'm interested in it. Um, you will see it in my rotation in the fall time. I really, really, really wanted to finish it this year because I think it's been in my webs for like four years, I think, something like that. And um, the reason why I didn't do eyes, it's because, as you can see, there's a um, three-fourth and one-fourth stitching uses and French knots. And back then I did not know how to do it. I remember in her nose right here, it's also using the half stitches and three-fourths and stuff. And I had no idea what to do, so I did as I thought to do. I don't know why I didn't Google it, search it. Now I'm gonna leave it as it is, and that's why the eyes are not done yet. <laughs> because I didn't know how to do it, I was not in the mood to search for it, so I'm like, I'll figure it out later when I finish anything else, everything else. And that's another reason why I'm upset with the Ida, because all those three fourths and stuff, it's kind of hard to do it on here. It's never even, but it's okay. Oh, I guess I need to finish this part over here too. And for being very, very old project, I'm actually, I'm okay with the stitches that I did. I think I did pretty good. So yeah, finish the empty spots, finish the main, and then do a background. I hope it's gonna look fine, and if it's not, you know, I can undo it and just keep it as it is. But that's a very good news. I'm very, very happy that I found her. My main project of the year. This is Lovely Victorian Home by Dimensions. This is how it's gonna look like at the end. I achieved 70%. In my goals video, you saw uh, only the first floor. So all of this was added after. I think I added like 4,000 stitches or something like that. There's white floss over here too, you barely can see it. All the back stitching was done over here. Do you finish this empty spot? Um, so yes, I finished all the back stitching and I keep building my house. And now we got a second floor almost, almost there. I cannot wait to do the back stitching on the windows. Here's the preview. I like how they use black and white floss mix. So white gives you effect of the blur in the window. I did it over here. And it's like a glare. Glare in the window. I like that effect. I also realized that technique is locking. It's back stitching. Um, I'm searching right now and doing different techniques, a lot of stitchers do it a little bit differently so I'm actively trying um, different ways how to do the back stitching because I'm not very happy with the way how mine looks especially like long back stitching this one drives me the most insane um, yeah I used two different ways and I think the bottom lines are like more than I did the top ones but it's not really important. The important part is growing. <laughs> My goal was in June, stitch it to 75%. I'm 71 right now. I don't think I will able to achieve it, but still I'm very happy with my progress. Um, and... Hi. Misha. You saying hi? I'm filming on his table. <laughs> This table is by the window and he likes to sit by the window. Anyway, I guess I have a co-host, a beautiful furry background. So there we go. Anyway, this is my updates. A little bit of close-up. If you worry what this is all about, this is my lazy method of parking my floss. So I don't have to keep flipping my hoop and fixing the floss from the back. 
I'm just fixing it out front. There's the progress so far. The flowers is still my favorite part. Okay, you can stay. But please don't take attention from my stitching. Because <laughs> everybody's going to look at your pretty face. Okay, I'm getting distracted, Louise, by you. <laughs> uh, Peonies by Empa Studio. Also, the project that I showed you in my plants video. Um, Basically, this big peony they're going to do over here, I keep stitching it, so all of this is new. Um, I lost my preview, so it's going to be a surprise for everybody how it's going to look at the end, okay? We said no. <laughs> Don't. No, no, no. But um, not as much as I planned to stitch it. The plan original was 870, 875 stitches per week. Uh, the first two weeks of June I achieved that goal and now I've been slacking but it's only because this week I had two projects that well one project that I was actively working on to finish um, I save it for last so let's check it out this one first but yeah I'm just keep stitching it keep editing um, somewhere right here will be the corner of the project so hopefully this week I will be able to move it and then over here I don't think it's fully stitched I think it's somewhere like right here and there's lots of empty spot too anyway I told you in my plan video you're gonna see lots of uh, same whips over and over again um, I'm trying not to bore you with it um, so I start new projects <laughs> but all about it just a little bit later and magic needles singing robins so this used to be my work process because I cross stitch at work a lot but it's a tourist season so I don't stitch at work anymore so wherever progress I can get it's already amazing because I cannot do much because you know work is my priority <laughs> but I think the last time I showed you it was like this much before my May month of starts I achieved 50% over here and now I'm at 64 so we have two more flowers we got some French knots a butterfly that oh you look anyway I'm stitching it on Belfast, so it's a 30 second count and it's like vintage blue, the name of it I think. As you can see, it's not evenly dyed. It has like white thank you. It has like a white spots in it, and I like how it gives you that effect of the sky. But here's the progress on this one. So not as much as I hope I would achieve the progress, but still very happy with how little time I have for cross stitching lately. Work been taking lots of energy from me, but so I'm right here. I'm always about to move to this flower over here. I need to move my hoop, and now I kind of put myself in a what you call a pickle situation uh, because I need to move my hoop right uh, so I have more space over here for this corner. I almost achieved the corner, but I made French knots, which are this one's over here, and I don't want to put hoop on top of it, so you know they not get ruined. By the way, I love doing French knots. I'd rather do lots of French knots than backstitching. <laughs> and um, so I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to move up from the butterfly, so up this way, this flower, and then I'm going to move my hoop somewhere like right here. In between these French knots and these French knots, and then uh, this corner. Or maybe I will right away just move it next week, 
get to the corner and then just go up. Probably this will be the smarter way. But this is gonna be fun. This will be fun. This will be the easiest part because like what, three, four colors? One blend, couple of greens, and it's basically, it's like imitates that background. Or this is the front row, yeah, that's the background. So that should be very easy stitching. Not lots of, often lots change. And then I ordered a bigger hoop. So this is Norgi hoops, those are my favorite. This is medium size, I order large. And I order large because I want hoop that will fit these two birds and this be all together because the same palette of colors using in all three of these characters. And um, I don't wanna keep fixing my flaws and stuff. So I just want to stitch them together very last. In my head, <laughs> I already finished this project because I feel like, oh, I just need one good evening and I will finish it. <laughs> But in reality, it's still a lot of work. Um, but yeah, here's my progress so far. A new start. This is going to be a present for a co-worker. She always stop by and see what I cross-stitch. And every time she's so impressed. So one day I asked her if she wants something for me to cross-stitch for her. She's like, yes. I'm like, what would you like? She's like, I don't know, just something. I'm like, do you like beads? Uh, I show her what I'm stitching with the beads. She's like, yeah, it's beautiful. So she likes red wine. And I thought this kit by Mill Hill would be perfect. Um, the funny thing, I because of my challenge, I ordered only like recently, which seems like recently, but it's actually been 20 days. <laughs> anyway, uh, her birthday is on July 7th. And I feel like I can show it in my videos because I guarantee she's not watching my videos. So I have less than two weeks to stitch it. And it's promising to be a very easy stitch because the background, you don't stitch. Um, and over here, you can see it's just like big spots with same color. And the funny part though, you stitch it with the three flosses. So that I wasn't a fan of, but it's okay. And then I am going to do some adjustments because she is, um, she speaks uh, Spanish. But I think this isn't probably Italian, I don't know. So I am going to adjust this to rojo, not rosso. And other than that, it should be easy. Like the stitching itself is very easy. I just will probably spend like a little bit of time over here to adjusting and realizing how I'm going to change the lettering. But I think I will be, I will be okay. <laughs> I started today and this is my progress so far. Again, I started it at work and I had maybe like 20 minutes of quiet time and then craziness started, which is okay. The work is my priority, but I had a chance to stitch what I had to chance to stitch. And I think today after I finish filming this video, I'm going to keep stitching this project. I think for this week, it's gonna be my main project because I wanna finish it as soon as possible and give to her at her birthday. Um, but I started with the middle. The kit comes with this beautiful yellow perforated paper. And again, all the stitching you do, you do with three flosses, um, which is not fun to start the floss, but it's okay. As always, I took this very simple organizers that I got a full set from Amazon and I copied this symbol. I separated the floss if you never stitch Mill Hill, Mill Hill floss comes in a bag, uh, in a big one like knot, so you have to separate the flosses yourself. Over here should be only three greens, which is dark, medium, and light. But for me, these two greens, they different. I feel like this is a little bit darker, this will be lighter, but they're both darker than the light green, so I separate it just in case for now. Like this one, I might use as a, a ground area over here. And this one, just in case, I will use on the bottle over here. Just in case, you know, maybe it is the same and my eyes just playing weird with me. <laughs> but just in case, I'm gonna stitch them in the separate places. Therefore, it's not gonna be very noticeable. But uh, yeah, so I just put a regular piece of paper, not very pretty, but um, I know 
by the look at it it looks like a very easy project but it's at the end it's gonna be beautiful and um i don't want to waste time for organizing i just want to stitching but i know this is very helpful i don't need to keep checking with my chart i just can't you know i see the symbol and i just grab the floss that i need so this is how it's all gonna look we have what five five colors of beads and a button there's the beads and the button so this one already came with the new buttons um mill hill used to put ceramic buttons but they i guess collaborating right now with just another button company and now all the buttons are from that company they're no longer ceramic and there's the beads i think the most of it is going to be in the frame and um, grapes and i think the lettering is completely done in beads also and then just the button goes in the most empty space like right here I don't drink alcohol at all there is no reason for that I just don't enjoy it but I really like this project and I wanted to stitch it and I'm very very happy that I found a person who I can stitch it for and I'm pretty sure she's gonna like it um, I'm not gonna order the Mill Hill frame I do have frame perfect size I'm just gonna color it and I hope it's gonna color good I'm gonna try to match this color of the frame and yeah so if anything everything i mean <laughs> if everything goes to according to plan which is this is going to be the main project of this week and i should be able to finish it by the end of this week next week i probably going to show you the finished result and finally i'm going to show it to you this is my first finish of this month this is good morning rooster I will link I will leave a link in the description below to the website where you can purchase it and this is one of my starts from May month of starts and it's finished uh, be honest with you that was one of those projects that I couldn't stop thinking so literally June started and I grabbed it uh, first thing to stitch because I knew I couldn't relax and stitch all my goals till I knew that how little I have left to stitch on this one the last time i showed you everything was done by a rooster but a rooster and he has so much beads do you see it look at him um i wish the lighting will be better so i can show you all the sparkles but the rooster has a friend a chicken it's a good night chicken and um that's why I haven't cut the fabric yet. She's gonna go right here. I doubt she's gonna fit in here. Maybe I will try, because if she will, that would be amazing. Therefore, I can keep the big cut of fabric. But be honest with you, I really, really wanna start the chicken because I had so much fun stitching this one. It was such a pleasant, enjoyable, easy, but interesting project kind of gives me that mill hill vibe where we have stitching and we have beads and i like on the rooster the element of the sunlights right it's the bugle beads so i think it's a very well done work by the designer so just a reminder if you will purchase the rooster or a chicken um, I'm using Saga app. You don't have to. The designer also provides you with a digital form, like a PDF form um, of the pattern. So you don't need Saga app. But if you always wanted to try it, it's a great opportunity. I love it. I I am thinking of making a video about Saga app so you have more understanding where to find it, how to transfer your patterns, whatnot, and all of that. Because I feel like every time I answer more questions, I have more questions in my comments. So separate videos coming. Um, and for me, it's always been such a like a like I so used to it that I didn't even know that I would get so many questions about it. So the videos coming, I'll explain a little bit more. I'm researching um, so I can give you as much more information as I can. A designer um, in the pattern, no matter which one you're going to use 
Designer gives you beads in Preciosa beads. It's the brand of the beads, um, most popular in that part of the world. Uh, milk heel is hard to find, in fact, it's very expensive. But it's easy to transfer it to milk heel. All you need to do is just Google uh, the picture of the Preciosa beads and just whatever looks like to you. Beads 0557. It says right here, Preciosa Beats number whatever, Preciosa Beats number whatever. So I just Googled it and Mill Hill matched. So I used probably the most basic common gold Mill Hill Beats. The cream color ones, I used one, two, three number. It's just a cream, cream color Beats. And for red one, that number, whatever, I switched to 3049, the shiny red beads that I had in my stash. And that's what I used. And also, um, if you missed my first video, you see the sparkle over right here? It's because this element and this center elements, whatever that 433 brown I used, I did it a blend. I found in my stash this Etoile DMC Floss and I did the blend. So in the pattern, the pattern, the flosses are in DMC, but what I did, I grabbed one floss of the regular DMC, one of Etoile, I made a blend and this element and all the middle elements over here, I stitched with this blend. This is a palette for future chicken. Again, this is how she's gonna look like and lots of matching colors the new ones only the blue ones so these three are new everything else gonna match with rooster and I absolutely love it I thought maybe add same type of the floss but mix it with blue but I decided not I didn't want it to be opposites or anything like that I'm going to repeat and all the brown elements I'm going to stitch with a mix so the Stimplana flowers probably the placement where she sits and then over here and over here I'm going to stitch with that mix to match them and then beads they are exactly the same so that basic gold a cream I hope I have enough and then we have blue beads so as you can see, that's the number that are going to be used in Preciosa beads. And I found this in my stash. This is Mill Hill 20. So this is going to be the beads palette. And I think this blue almost perfectly matching with this DMC floss. And I'm very happy that I was able to find something in my stash. And I cannot wait to start her. I'm itching. <laughs> I really, really want it. So this is how she's gonna look like. A perfect pair for a perfect rooster. I don't know when I'm going to start her. I'm hoping anytime soon. Let's see, just for interest, how many stitches. She has 4,416. So that's the total with all the back stitching and beats and everything. And let's see how much rooster had. Rooster was. Ooh, Sh the chicken going to be one thousand stitches bigger than the rooster, which makes sense because in the rooster, this the background is not stitched. That's the fabric, where in um, in the chicken. The only spot is not getting stitched, it's the background where the chicken itself. So the side elements, they fully stitched. So that's the only empty spot in the whole pattern or in this little column right here. Anyway, very excited to stitch a pair for him. Um, again, don't know when it's going to happen, but I'm not going to be surprised if I just started on a random Tuesday because um, it was a very enjoyable project to stitch. Um, the designer, I cannot remember the name right now, but the designer has a lot of different designs that I'm eyeing. <laughs> 
I'm thinking about. Eventually, I probably will purchase it and stitch something else. Um, but anyway, there we go. And now to the big finale. Finally, a big finish. This is Dimensions Garden Door. This is a first dimension kit um, that I started. The first dimension kit that I finished. Basically, first dimension everything my introduction in my intro my introduction to this brand started with this um, project this is a regular collection but i feel like it should be a gold collection because um this is this is not easy <laughs> a regular collection usually just a little bit easier than the golden collection and this one was full <laughs> craziness uh, yeah so let's start with the beginning. I started it probably three years ago, maybe two, maybe three, maybe two. Anyway, it's been a long time. And as always, I started with the middle. <laughs> and my first dimension kit, I'm starting with the middle and that's this part right here, which is this. The way that my eyes just went crazy, I don't understand why they're making the pattern itself so difficult. So somebody commented on my previous video that um, I have no rights of saying negative things about the pattern because um, why I'm going for something difficult if I'm a beginner. And I can see your point. And that's totally fine. We, you know, we all have different experience. Um, yes, I am a beginner at Dimension Kits. I do definitely have some points where I need to be improved. But the pattern itself, it's not difficult. Like the image itself, it's not difficult. This is not difficult stitching, especially like where the door was, where the wall was, all of that. That was super easy. It was just one big spot of stitching with the same color. But when it goes to that confetti stitching, which is, I understand, on all patterns gonna be difficult, I think it's the symbols, colors, and all of that mix of it that makes it difficult, at least for me, to concentrate my eyes on it. I know it's a confetti stitching, but like big lettering next to each other and all of that, and honestly, I feel like if you do different colors, so we see black, blue, red, I think it would be a great idea, for example, if black will be all the regular stitching, the blue will be mixed, and I don't know, red will be half stitch, some kind of sort, you know? Then it will be easier to read the chart and more understanding why I have so many different colors. Still, it's hard to, like, I've stitched lots of different confettis. For some reason over here it's so hard to concentrate and then a grid right over here was so hard to concentrate and back stitching and the grid i feel like it's all mixed up all together again i use saga up i was very happy when i found a saga pattern for this kit and again i own the kit so i can use whatever i want and um yeah just letting you know this is something that you will have to deal with if you decide on purchasing this kit at the end i feel like results are absolutely beautiful i love it uh, lazy daisies yeah that was not a fun part this one kind of exhausted me <laughs> but at the end effect is absolutely beautiful again my favorite long back stitching along the door i'm still not happy with that and i think i overstretch my fabric because my door is a little bit crooked over here not because i stitch wrong it's because the fabric i overstretch it to take it to the framer i'm i am hoping they will be able to stretch it for me the right way and then this element right here the back stitching i did it um I don't know how to say it in English, but basically what I did, I used two flosses with the same 
um, I use two needles with the same floss. So the first one I will pop here, stop over here and just make one big stitch. But with the second needle I in the second floss, I will lay this first floss in a shape that it needs to be and just catch it in the spots where it needs to be catched. So I'm basically like right here, see? It's one big like half fourth circle shape. And what I did, I come out from here to here and then I just laid it and with the second needle and a second floss, I cut it to give them more elegant, more circle like shape because if I will do it as a back stitching, it will be very angled. Oh no, I just noticed this. I will have to fix my back stitching because after washing and iron it, it got moved. Oh, that's no fun. Anyway. Uh, lots of people changing the cat face because they think they look grumpy, but I like it. Same over here. I took too big of a stretch for the back stitching, so it's moved a little bit. Lazy daisies. Roses absolutely gorgeous. The windows, the trees, the hat. The empty spots that you see supposed to be this way. It's in the potter. Overall, I think it's absolutely beautiful. I am very excited to frame it for so many different reasons. Um, because the colors, it's totally all my colors. And it's my first dimensions. And I really like the design and I like different elements and for being a regular collection not a gold collection oh my god do you see all the black stitching you stitch it with a full six strings of floss so the normal stitching you do with two this was with five, uh, six this the very dark gray was with five lots of half stitching with was with four uh, strings of floss like, I was <laughs> shocked, but I understand now why why I was stitched the way I was stitched, because it gives you that depth, and it does look like a very dark background, but it's not even full stitch, it's a half stitch. But because you stitch stitching with literally a full set of floss, it looks so dark, and the fabric not peeking through, and it's a full stitch, and same over here, it's like five and four strength of floss in the window. Over here, it's all half stitching. Basically needlework, I guess, right? In my previous video, I think in my May month of starts part two, I showed you how I <laughs> organized my DMC floss because DMC floss, oh, sorry my dimensions floss because dimensions floss comes on organizers like this and um so when i started this project <laughs> funny story i started it again right i started with this pattern and as a finished result it does not look that difficult but on the pattern it looks so crazy and back then i did not have saga up and i got so upset so irritated that I literally grabbed it, didn't put it in any bag, didn't do anything, and then just shoved it in some kind of box, in some kind of closet. Like, I got so upset with that. Um, I guess, I don't know, my skills were not enough, my eyes were not concentrated. I don't know. I feel like the design of the pattern itself, again, it's not that difficult. It can be complicated. But the way how they made their patterns that very distracting and for some reason my eyes cannot cannot read it i don't know maybe i'm not smart enough anyway i shoved it i was maybe getting it like out once in a blue moon and um i was trying to move to the door like pass it busy and try to stitch it like half of it i stitch by the pattern uh, without using the app thank god for saga but <laughs> This is what you're going to get if you're not going to braid your floss. <laughs> this is madness. Somehow I still was able to work with it. Uh, I was still able to pull through 
flosses that I needed. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> highly recommend to braid your floss. If you wonder what I mean, check out my video, May Month of Starts Part 2. I'm showing you how now I'm organizing my DMC floss because of this right here. <laughs> but anyway, don't repeat my mistakes. Please organize your floss because this is madness. I don't understand how I'm gonna undo it all. Maybe next time we go for some kind of trip, I need to take it with me so I can separate it all and I need to figure out how to keep all the leftovers for this floss. I don't know if I should just cut it with a tag. Should I bobbinate it? I don't know. I have not come up with idea how I'm gonna keep the leftovers from the Dimensions kits. But despite all my struggles and all my negative, I guess, thoughts, I pushed it through and I finished it and I'm very, very happy. So there is one goal achieved from my plans for the rest of this year. Uh, only uh, so many to go. <laughs> if you watched the video, you know all my crazy plans. But this was a part of the plan for the month of June. It's to finish this one, to finish my rooster, and I was able to achieve it. And I'm very, very happy about it. Again. This project, I see myself, like I see it framed as a pair to my lovely, lovely Victorian Home by Dimensions, also the project of the year that I'm actively working right now. So when I finish that one, only then I will take them to the framer shop and finally put in a frame and decorate our house with it. And that was it, how amazing. That rooster is so cute. I'm sitting right now and really thinking like I have floss ready, I have a beads ready, I have a fabric ready, I just need to start the chicken, but no, I need to finish my present first that I'm making for the co-worker and um, you know, my main projects are also waiting for me, the, all that progress, so um, I definitely, I'm definitely gonna have a busy week, so after this one I'm going to continue on teaching the wine because uh, I really, really want to finish as soon as possible so I don't finish like I did before her birthday. <laughs> let me know in the comments what would you like to see next week and um, let me also know in the comments how do you like my finishes. Should I start a chicken or should I follow my plants? I probably should follow my plants. But she's so cute. And it's only 4,000 stitches, okay, almost five, but like most of it's beads. Those are fun and fast. Anyway. <laughs> Let me know in the comments what you think. Um, I'll, for whatever reason, hopefully see you next week if I'll come up with the idea what to film. And happy stitching, happy, happy week. <laughs> I'll see you next time.